All right, everyone. So in this video here, I wanted to give you my perspective and my thoughts on Microsoft purchasing ZeniMax Media, the parent company that owns Bethesda. So Microsoft purchased them for $7.5 billion, which is, oh man, $7.5 billion. If I remember correctly, when they purchased Mojang, the people behind Minecraft, I think it was like $2.2 billion. It was around the $2 billion mark. And this here is $7.5 billion. Wow. Um, this is kind of a game changer. Because I don't... Here's the thing. I'm not really upset about this. I'm not like worried that Microsoft is going to like close everything off and just put everything under the Xbox brand and under, you know, only through Xbox and that's it. Microsoft has actually been fairly open in terms of allowing games on other platforms. They've been releasing games through Steam. But clearly... Clearly, there is a big message that Microsoft is basically telling people. And that is, we are in this for the long haul. We are not messing around. And we do not care where you are playing these games at. Microsoft actually has made this clear even, even a couple of years ago. I remember they were saying that they don't, they're looking in the future that they don't care if you're playing Xbox games on Xbox and it's clear they are using this as I don't want to necessarily say a weapon but they're basically leveraging into what they see as the future and that is services game services Xbox game pass if you, I actually just a disclaimer I actually do subscribe to Xbox game pass Really great service, and in fact, there's actually been quite a bit of games coming out on it that's actually been coming on the Switch, and I would sometimes use the Game Pass service as a way to just test it out, see if I like it, and then if I really do, I'll go ahead and buy it on the Switch. But I'm not going to lie, it's, it's really compelling in that it's really to the point now that in, in a lot of ways, you can basically start playing these games on any device you have. You can play them on your computer. You can stream them on your phone. You can buy an Xbox Series. If you have an Xbox One, a One S or a One X, or a, a One S Digital Edition, you can still play Xbox games on those systems. Microsoft just is making this very clear. They do not care where you are playing these games anymore. They, they don't, they're not in the position like Sony is where Sony basically has to rely on PlayStation to be successful. And I think that's something a lot of PlayStation fans don't really realize this. And that is Microsoft as an entire company has so much cash on hand that can that even just purchasing Bethesda for 7.5 billion dollars is for them a drop in the bucket. And I'm not even kidding here. They actually have so much money that they could if they're willing to pay enough money they can basically do whatever they want. They, Microsoft is that big now in, in 2020. It's crazy how big Microsoft as an, as an entire company really is. And the difference in philosophy with how Microsoft is going down the road in terms of games versus how Sony is and Sony has been kind of creeping into more of how Microsoft is doing. They're just doing it at a much slower pace. And the difference is Microsoft is basically trying to fast forward and just 
start getting this going. And and as an entire as a whole for like Sony, for example. They at most probably have about five billion dollars in cash to basically use to buy up something, and even then, they could not purchase Bethesda with everything they have. That just shows you, as a company, how much bigger Microsoft is. So, basically, with all this going on. Microsoft has pretty much gone into the market of every sector now. So with mobile gaming, stream the games onto your phone. Either get one of those uh, controller attachments uh, on the side and play it like that, like a Switch. Or you can just, you know, basically just get an Xbox controller with a phone clip on it, clip the phone on it. Hey, look, you're playing mobile games, and as long as you have your data connection, you're good to go. You can play the games as if you were home. And I'm not going to lie, I've, I've been using their cloud gaming service, and it works surprisingly well. There are some hitches here and there, so I'm a little more forgiving just because it's still so new. And being that at least... Um, you know, with 5G, well, 5G basically here now, but it's just going to improve over time. And as more and more people start upgrading their phones to support the 5G networks with the higher speeds, it's going to be, it's going to get to the point where you don't necessarily need to actually physically own the games anymore. And, and I know there's going to be people out there that are going to be like, but I want my physical media. Hey, you know what? I like physical media. You know, I recently got this for uh, Xbox One. By the way, really good game. But I do like the physical media. And I am going to try to pre-order an Xbox on, on the, you know, later today. Or today when, um, you know, when it opens up. And I'm pretty much... I'm pretty much getting the Series X just because it's going to be more future-proof. Uh, it's going to be a more powerful console. Um, a terabyte of storage versus 512. And, of course, the disk drive. So all the physical games I do have for the Xbox One, I can still play them on there and no problem. And that is something a little surprising from Sony. And that is backwards compatibility. Now I know, I know not everyone is really big in backwards compatibility, but being that we're going into next gen very, very soon, there isn't really that much in terms of must have games on next gen consoles to really pick up and play. You know, even on Sony's side, you know, let's just say, oh, what about Spider Man? You know, Miles Morales. That's also coming out for PS4. Uh, what about... Hey, what about Sackboy? Well, that's also coming out for PS4. Um, what about the New Horizon game? That's also coming out for PS4. So, you see the trend here? Now, of course, those games are going to look better and play better on PS5, no doubt. But, I'm just saying... You know, both on the Xbox and also on PS5, there isn't really any must-have games that you really need to get on these new machines. In fact, pretty much the majority of them. There, there is actually um, uh, Demon Souls is a PS5 game, not on PS4. And I want to say Medium on Xbox is going to be a launch title too. So at least there is something to play, but of course it's also coming out on Game Pass. See, that's the thing is that I'm looking at the Xbox personally for me as a service. You know, 
I'm buying the Xbox strictly for Game Pass, paying into you know, paying for Game Pass, and whatever physical games I have on the Xbox One. If I want to watch a 4K Blu-ray movie or any uh, um, physical media movies I have on it, that that's what I use the Xbox for. So, so yeah, it's it's going to be really interesting. I actually use the Xbox as like my everything media box. So I use it, you know, for media consumption. I use it to play games on it. So, so yeah, it's, it's going to be really interesting to see how all this plays out. And being that Microsoft does not really care about where you play these games anymore, you know, as long as you're paying the $15 a month, for the for the Game Pass service, and as long as you're buying games on on whatever platforms it's being released on, they're making money. So it'll be interesting. And they Phil Spencer did also say that when it comes to certain uh, games, they're look they're going to look at them as a a case by case type of thing. You know. Based on the game, if it's something that they see fit to actually just release this, say, like on PS5. Because let's just face it, at least with uh, Game Pass, basically any games that does come out on here will pretty much be available on PC. So, so yeah, I think, I think Microsoft's doing two things right now. Uh, right before pre-order starts. One is, they're basically letting people know that, hey, they are actually serious about this. They're not just releasing the Xbox series for no reason. There, There is a reason why. They're using the Xbox series as a vehicle to pay into Game Pass. And they're... And yeah, this... This is... This is a bigger deal than I think some people are going to realize. Because, because Microsoft may not have like the Uncharted, the God of War, and things like that. But with this acquisition, Microsoft, the you know, Xbox, they now have the most first party properties out of any, anyone now and that's crazy to think about it you know if you're someone that is more you know wanting to get a wider variety of games you're going to be looking into the Xbox and something that I don't think people also realize is that because Microsoft is also trying to get more and more people to pay into Game Pass what does that mean? Well, if you're going to get a crap ton of people, there are currently about 15 million subscribers to Game Pass. So if they can double that, and let's just say, for example, you know, they get like a couple hundred million dollars a month just in Game Pass subscribers. And if they get more and more people, they can get like two, three, four, five hundred thousand dollars a month just for Game Pass alone. And that's not including uh console sales, which I'm pretty sure they're gonna they're losing money on them. Um but you know if they if people buy uh games on the Xbox uh if if people only just pay for Xbox Live Gold and don't want Game Pass, you know, they're still obviously getting money from that. So let's just say hypothetically they gain like two to three hundred thousand dollars a month, and it just keeps growing and growing. They can start using that money and start putting that into new projects, so they can quickly get more games out, and in fact, even more unique types of games that comes out. You know, may, maybe games that typically would not work as a full-scale physical release type of game, 
but for something for like Game Pass where it's more like an experimental type game, you know, that's actually not a bad thing either. I mean, say what you want about Battletoads, but I don't think Battletoads, the new Battletoads, would ever make sense to be made without Game Pass. That game was strictly made because of Game Pass. And it's things like that that I think going forward in the future, Xbox has a bigger leg in the game than I think than I think a lot of, let's just say, PlayStation fanboys are actually going to be realizing. But what I will say is, some people might look at this like, oh, they're taking a... They're taking away a wide range of people to play these games now because they're going to be forced to buy an Xbox. Not necessarily. I mean, keep in mind, whatever games are still being made and released that's already scheduled, Microsoft's just going to honor them. So, you know, for Switch owners, you're still you're still going to get Doom Eternal. And from what I've heard, they're going to be announcing something about that very, very soon. Uh, those uh, two Bethesda games are coming out for PS5. Those are still going to stay exclusive. Microsoft's not going to mess with that. So, and on top of that, you know, Microsoft owns like My- uh, Minecraft, which is pretty much on everything. And it recently got a VR update for PlayStation VR. And let's not forget that, you know, Microsoft is also has released um, uh, Ori uh, on the Switch, for example. Cuphead, uh, not too long ago, got released for PS4. So Microsoft, when they're looking at these, they're looking at this as a case-by-case, like, okay, would these games make more sense just to stay on Game Pass on Circle on the Xbox platform? Or games, say, like The Elder Scrolls, Fallout. Would those games make more sense just to release it for everyone? And based on their recent track hit, track history in terms of releases, and don't forget, they also have been releasing their first party games on Steam. Microsoft does not care if you're... They, they would want you to pay for... Game Pass, but if you don't want to, you just want to buy the games like you've been doing, they're also going to allow that. So it's a win win for everyone, as how I'm looking at this. So if you do want to pre order the Xbox Series, um, it's going to be in the major retailers. I'm going to try to have links to the major uh, retailers. In the description below. So. Uh, I think the start time is going to be 11 a.m. Eastern. Um, in my time zone. So. So yeah. I'm going to be having my phone. And I don't really talk about this too much. But I actually also have a Chromebook. So I'm actually going to be using this to try to. Uh, uh, order the games just because it can automatically connect to my to my phone for internet access, let's just say, and uh, go from there. But um, but yeah, this is this I this is a bigger deal than I think people, the average person, realize, and the fact that they get all of these different properties, they also get id tech, you know, the engine. That runs like Doom and Wolfenstein, for example. I mean, it's pretty amazing. You know, just something like this can just change like that. And I've heard, or I've read on Twitter, that John Carmack, you know, the the person behind Doom back in the day, it might be considering getting back into developing games, which is really, really exciting. So, so yeah, if that, if that's what it took 
hey, you know what? Probably spend $7.5 billion. It's not really that big of a deal for them. But in terms in terms of the whole picture for Microsoft, this is this is actually chump change for them. That's that's how big Microsoft is. And if something like this can happen, I would not be surprised. I'm going to make a prediction here. And I don't really do predictions too often. I'm going to make a wild prediction here. And that is, I can see in the future, let's just say in the next five years. Let's just, let's do that. In the next five years, there's going to be some kind of deal that Microsoft does with Nintendo. The only reason why I'm saying this is because Microsoft has actually been going, going to Nintendo for years about either doing some kind of partnership or even at one point acquiring them. And, and yeah, uh, I actually think that is something Microsoft could do and could probably pull off. And just think about it, you know, Nintendo right now, I know I'm getting a little off topic here, but Nintendo has basically found the sweet spot in terms of uh, playing games portably, but also playing games, you know, on your TV. Microsoft for years has been wanting to get into the Japanese market. They just cannot get into that market. And that's part of the reason why they've been solely releasing games on the Switch. Also, you know, certain titles on the Switch. Because at least, it, at least it'll get people to play those games even though it's not actually on Xbox hardware, but it's actually still playing the games on on a platform that's more popular in a different region. And not only that, another reason why I'm also saying this too is because, because of China. Because if you don't know, uh, Nintendo did a deal with uh, Tencent to basically basically release the switch in the Chinese market. So, you know, all the digital storefront, all the games, um, they're basically being altered through Tencent to be released in China. And I could see Microsoft doing some kind of deal with Nintendo to basically start getting these games, you know, Xbox games, or even as bold as, like, doing some kind of deal where the Game Pass software is on the Switch. Not necessarily for the U.S. market, but for those other territories like Japan, China, other regions that Microsoft doesn't have their hand in yet. And I could actually see that something going forward in the future. That's just my thoughts, though. Um... This actually does make a lot of sense in the fact that you can also stream the games onto your phone. Um, we live in different times, that's for sure. So, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Um, let me know what your thoughts down below. But, yeah, this is, this is kind of a big acquisition and... We'll see what happens in the future. The one thing I really do hope that happens out of this is a new proper Commander King game. Not that mobile crap. Nope. Nope. That that mobile version that Bethesda announced a while ago, no, that, that does not exist. A proper Commander King game. That's all. And just to let you know, I will have links um, to like Best Buy, Microsoft Store, and other retailers uh, to pre-order the Xbox Series. So if you're wondering, you know, which place to go. Um, I would probably, from what I've been hearing, 
I would say keep GameStop towards the bottom of the list. Like the order I'm going to be looking at is Microsoft Store, then Best Buy, Target, and then um, actually I'm probably going to be concentrating on those three retailers. Uh, Best Buy, Microsoft Store, and Target. I think those are the three I'm going to be concentrating on. But I think out of all of them, I think I think going straight to Microsoft is probably going to be the most stable because trying to pre-order a freaking PS5 on Best Buy is a complete nightmare. So, yeah. So yeah, we'll have, we'll have to see what happens. Um, you know what? Let me double check. Xbox Series. Oh, no, can't pre-order yet. Damn. All right, I'll end it here. Like always, have a good one. Leave those comments down below. Like this video, share this video, subscribe if you're not a subscriber. And like always, have a good one. I would like to know, you know, if you're planning on getting an Xbox or are you still going to stick with PS5 um, or you just don't care about consoles. I don't know. It would be interesting. Let's have that discussion down below.